Hi, this is Peter with Side Effects, and today we're going to be talking about the Feather Width SOP. So in order to illustrate how this SOP works, we're going to use the uh, default Feather Template SOPs, which when you drop them down, give you this, uh, and it creates just a, a basic feather for us to use um, as our example. So the Feather Width SOP doesn't have a ton of attribute or a ton of parameters on it, but it does give us the ability to control some really interesting things. So the first thing we can look at here is the shaft width. And this will simply just change the overall width of the shaft. And what this is doing is actually adjusting the point attribute width along all of the points on this feather shaft. So that's what's happening here when we just change this in its basic form. But there's some other things that we can do here that are kind of interesting. So what we can do is we could do something like a ramp. And let's just reverse this so it maybe makes a little more sense for us. And what we can do here is we can see that we can adjust the width along this shaft. And since these points um, are what drive the barbs that come off of them, it actually inherits the width from those uh, from the points right here. So in this case, we're seeing not only the shaft decreasing as we go along it, but also the barb width decreasing. So you can see that you could obviously do some you know, some interesting stuff with this and kind of create some weird kind of shape situations here, you know, things that where the thickness is going up and down along it. Um, but this is just, this first one is mostly just a practical way of being able to kind of change the overall width of your feather. So if you want to specifically change the shaft width and then the barb width separately, um, we can then check on this barb width as well. So you can see that the shaft has its own width here that we're visualizing, but the barbs now have separate uh, widths that they're um, being visualized with. And so in that case, we now have a width barb L and a width barb R. So what this is doing is giving us a four float uh, attribute that will go along each of the points of the barbs here. So in this case, we have four four points that go along the barbs. Um, these are vectors here, so they have 12 floats. These are floats, so they only have four, one for each of the corresponding points on the barbs. And so as we change this barb width, we'll see it gets thicker and thinner. Um, and we can do similar things to what we did before. We can grab this ramp, and now we can kind of control how the thickness of these barbs behave along kind of the, the length of where the barbs are on this um, on this geometry, right? So we can kind of control how these work based on their location on the overall shaft. So here we can just kind of create a weird little curve and it will adjust up and down the widths of these barbs. But if we wanted to change the width across a barb, what we can do is I'll reset this and we'll check on map ramp to barbs. And now we're actually getting our ramp uh, f along the barbs themselves. So if we wanted them to start thicker and get thinner or some other, you know, range of, of, of values here, we can certainly do that. And that will be reflected in our barbs. Now, keep in mind that there are only four virtual points here that we're, that we're adjusting. So there is a limitation depending on how you have those sampled, but just something to keep in mind with, um, you know, to be able to do some really interesting, um, kind of effects. And the last thing I want to just mention without going too far into is that these overrides can also take things like attributes and texture primitives. So you could um, paint texture primitives um, and uh, using our new texture paint tools and drive these feather widths with those as well, along with traditional uh, attributes that may be on curves um, that the guide curves are ready. So there's just a lot of different ways that you can use to kind of create these um, these widths and kind of control this um, this step of the grooming process. So hopefully this gives you a better idea of how this node works and kind of where this can exist in your workflow. Thanks so much for watching.